Okay, so this next brew method is the Bee House Dripper. Bee House is a brand, it's a style. Um, you'll notice in here you can see two small holes, unlike the V60, which had a big massive hole and spirals, this has two small holes and That's more rectangular ridges, right? Mm -hmm. And I've seen other knockoff brands at various markets. Tell me why Bee House is, is, is useful. Yeah. Um, this shape you'll see all over the place. It's kind of your standard cone shape that has a flat bottom. And what's different about this one is it does, it does have the two holes on the bottom, so you have a little bit faster flow. Okay. And the ridges are deeper. Um, so it's gonna, again, increasing the flow. I've seen other drippers that like same basic idea, but the ridges are pretty much non-existent. And what happens is the, the water doesn't flow through those properly. And yeah, they was, also tend to have like one hole on the bottom and the coffee just kind of gets stuck and never drips out. Yeah, I was in a pinch on a road trip one time and forgot my, my pour over setup. I know, I do that. And um, went to a, a place, grabbed a knockoff one real quick, thought it would do the trick and honestly it was not nearly as good. It's, it'll work, but it's, it's not It wasn't as thing. good. One of the things I love about the Bee House is again, I'm, I'm paying 20 bucks for a ceramic, but then I can get these filters if I run Anywhere. low and I'm in a pinch, I don't have to wait two days on Amazon Prime or you know, if my local coffee shop is closed selling the filters, I can just get these at the, the regular supermarket, right? Yep. And that I think is one of the biggest benefits of something like the Bee House. Everything else has very specialized filtration mm -hmm. uh, or filters. This is really nice and convenient. And we get the ones with uh, the flavor enhancing micro perforations. Indeed. Uh, I do like that there. So tell us how to put this thing in properly. Yeah, so I wanna start by folding in the edges. I like to start with the bottom one. I'm just gonna fold that down flat bring the side in, fold that down as well. And this is a number two filter for those of you taking notes at home. Uh, that's just simply referring to the size. So you get number two, number four, number six, and so on. Um, since we're brewing simply one cup, number two is fine. What if you only have a number four filter? That'll do the trick. It'll just stick out the edges. It's more. got a lot of extra paper, but who yep. cares, right? And again, like all of our other pour over methods, I want to do some rinsing, make sure that my filter is nicely seated in place and I'm rinsing out any residual papery flavor, and I'm also preheating the brewer and the cup. It's like 13 now, brews with one stone. While that is uh, preheating, I'm gonna grind my coffee. All right, so I'm using for this, for the Bee House, I'm using the same basic recipe as the V60. And are um, we on grind setting 12 again? We are on grind setting 12 again. Okay. Though we might notice that um, the brew time will be a little bit different. Uh, just because the water flows through this differently. Great. Um, but I have the same 20 grams of coffee. I'm going to pour 300 grams of water um, in a sl slightly different manner. <clears throat> so I want to add my coffee, shake to level, and then I'm going to bloom and start my timer. So once again, I'm blooming with about 30 grams of water, and I really just want to get the surface nice and evenly wet. Um, so there's no dry spots and I'm going to see the coffee kind of expand. We'll see some bubbles and I'll let that rest for about 30 seconds. So this method is very similar to the V60 mm -hmm. and it's going to be very similar to the Kalita. All of these pour over methods seem very similar. Is there a whole lot of variance going on? Um, they are all uh, the, the same backbone essentially. Okay. Um, the same recipe with some very minor tweaks that result in um, some pretty significant flavor differences. Okay. So once I've bloomed my coffee, I'm gonna add some water up to 100 grams. And again, I'm pouring in a circular fashion. I wanna get everything evenly wet. And yeah, the, fl the differences between our, our pour over methods, um, a lot of it has to do with um, how quickly or slowly water flows through them. Um, what kind of grind setting we're using. Um, it kind of accentuates different notes of the coffee. So I'm gonna add now my second pour of water up to 200 grams this time. And again, I like to kind of break the pour up into three parts plus the bloom. So just a little bit of water at the beginning to bloom and then three pours of equal amounts to bring the rest of my water up to a hundred. So we've got bloom, grams. then 100 grams, then 200 grams, then 300 grams. Exactly. Each in 30 second increments. Just about. 
See, now that's something that I can do when I'm bleary-eyed in the morning and completely exhausted and can't really see right. Exactly. I like it's, that. Uh, it's really pretty simple. Um, it doesn't take a whole lot of thought. And it's, it's, especially when you're using all the tools to help, like a scale and a timer and a gooseneck kettle, it's really easy to get a good result. Now I'm just gonna, I've added all my water, so at this point I'm just gonna kind of wait for, um, I'm watching the stream of coffee. When I see it change from a nice steady stream to when it starts dripping, that's when I want to pull my filter. And some people uh, hesitate to do a pour-over method at home every morning because they feel like it's going to take too much time. Mm -hmm. Now obviously if you're using a Keurig dispenser that's going to be quick and you know, but it's not sure. nearly at the same level of quality. So how does this differ from say a Mr. Coffee as far as time-wise? Because you know, yes this is more labor intensive, but as far as total time you know, output, we're looking at about the same thing, right? Just about. Um, and you're going to get a far superior result. Absolutely. Um, start to finish from when you start your water and weigh out your coffee to when you're done, it's about five minutes really. I can do that. So now this cup is finished. That was about a three minute total brew time. And there we are. Perfect. Yeah.